Hey, everybody. Welcome to We'll See You in Hell, the podcast that is now a part of the Fangoria Podcast Network. For more information about the network, including other programs, how to follow this show, those shows, other shows, and find past episodes of all the shows, including We'll See You in Hell, please visit Fangoria.com. Now on with us. Patty, do you hear that? Do you hear that? Do I hear you talking? You hear me talking, but you don't just hear me talking. You hear me talking in stereo. Oh. I'm in both ears, as you are. Well, that I didn't. How would I know? I don't even have headphones on. We don't need headphones. All right. And we're both in stereo. Do you know why? I because know there's a, supposed to be a, a format change of brewing. We're shifting the format a little bit on your favorite podcast, We'll See You in Hell. Uh, we decided to go movie-less for a little while. But stick with the theme of hell and seeing you there and start discussing sin uh, each week, a different sin. This week we're going to talk about gluttony. The reason for this is, number one, we barely talk about the movies. Number two, it's a pain in the ball setup. Right. Number three, you know, we've got to focus on this thing that is just prompting us to have discussion anyway. Right. And here we are now. We're just... Do you feel this? Do you taste that cool, crisp freedom right now of us just kind of, we're just kind of sitting, facing each other. We don't have headphones on. There's nothing playing on the TV. Well, we can just chat here. There's eye contact, which is always a problem for me, but I can I can do my best with it. Okay. I'm a lot like a shelter dog. Um, who Like my dad has a shelter dog who I apparently was terribly abused, and my dad always says, don't look it in the eye. Yeah. And I, I feel like I'm sort of like that shelter dog. I don't like looking people in the eye, even my girlfriend. Yeah. I'll do well. it. <laughs> if you need me to do it, I'll do it. <laughs> well, here you are. We're face to face, eye to eye. Yeah. And uh, what you can't see at home is uh, cheek to cheek as well. Yeah. Which butt is, cheeks to butt cheeks. Well, then we wouldn't be face to face. We're turning around over our shoulders, kind of like a coy little cam girl situation. Yeah. That's <laughs> a couple of coy. Li- We're also. Uh, Recording this live to the web, nude, uh, as sort of a cam girl thing. Yeah. So we figured you and I both have the body types that the single women of America want to see more of. Or the single men. Or the single men, sure. So donate your bitcoins now and <laughs> see what you can get me to shove up my asshole <laughs> on this cam. Uh, yeah, we, you know, look, we wanted to try something different. All things should progress. All things should change. And we felt that most of the feedback coming in about the podcast was people enjoying the discussion aspect significantly more than the movie aspect. Well, there really was no movie aspect because we were never watching the movies. Yeah, we we, <laughs> we, we were watching them. But I mean, we we, they, they were playing, but we didn't pay a lot of attention to it. By the right. way, do I need to shut this door? Do you think I these, think so cars going by is too much i think so we had the door open here for because it's a nice breezy night here in la there you go Way door is shut sorry for that truck that went by but the point is is if you the listener are going to get essentially the same thing out of this whether we're watching the movie or not right why don't we just not watch the movie and and talk about our own lives and how they relate to sin every week Right, and we can't just freely talk because that's not really a podcast. It can't be like Pat and Joe talk. So we got to make it about a sin. But rest assured, we're going to go off on our old tangents and everything else. That was important to me when Joe asked me about this. I said I'd love to be able to kind of talk about whatever we want. We can keep bring it back to that week's sin. Sure. But I want to be able to explore other shit as well. The sin is the movie now. The only difference is we don't have to wear headphones and we don't have to set up a whole goddamn thing and stare at a TV. Exactly. Then I said, well, we'll only get seven episodes because there's seven deadly sins. Joe says there's tons of sins. I Googled sin list, found a four page list, 130 sins on each page. Right. Baby, we're going to be here for a while. Yeah. But this week we're starting with a big one. Gluttony that you and I both, I think, suffer from quite a bit, Sure. Uh, whether it's food, booze. Drugs, yep. Sex, mm-hmm. power, yep. It's just, it's just, we just lead gluttonous lives. Yeah, and you know, L.A. is a is a gluttonous place. It's not because people are are eating very healthy generally, but it's a gluttonous place in that everyone wants more, more, more. Yeah. The longer you live here, that becomes your outlook and attitude as well. 
and it leads to other sins, your bitterness, your jealousy, your anger. Yes. And um, I think that all that we'll deal with in the future. I think that if you're uh if you're here and you're not gaining more and more and more, you've failed. Yeah. And you should kill yourself. <laughs> that's a little extreme. Killing yourself also a sin. It is. It, that's for another week. Uh, that's for no, no, but I mean it is true. We live in this town where where the, the, the motives of everybody are gluttony yeah. is, or are gluttonous, excuse me. Yet there's also this strange reserve of like, well, I don't eat this and I don't do that and I don't yeah. drink this and I don't go there. And and then it makes a guy like me feel like a big fucking pig. Well, until you realize that some people are doing this as well, just in a closet manner. And that's why, like, you know, like I'll go home and somebody will be like, wow. So, like, are you guys just drunk all the time there or what happens? Then you'll find out they're a pill popper or some lady will be like, oh, you know, you, you drink vodka like on a random weeknight. That's crazy. And then she's on her 12th glass of wine. Sure. Everybody's gluttonous in their own way. Everybody's hypocritical in their own way. I agree. I agree. You want to hear what I did last night? Sure. Oh, this is a big one. Uh, I found a street near my new apartment that has a triangle formation of a McDonald's, a Burger King, and a KFC slash Taco Bell. Oh, boy. Uh, and I went, I almost hit all three. Not, it wasn't a, they're in the same building kind of thing. It wasn't a No, it's a triangle, like two, Burger King and McDonald's are on one side, and yeah. a perfect triangle point across from them okay. is KFC Taco Bell. I didn't hit all three. I almost did, but I, I was like, that's absurd. But I did, I went to KFC. I got three-piece meal, two sides. My two sides were potato wedges and mashed potatoes with gravy. Okay. Because I thought... A lot of starch there. Going to be dunking the potato wedges into the mashed potatoes with gravy. Sure. I call that a speed ball. Sort of like dipping a steak into a chicken. <laughs> it's well, just... It's, it's gluttonous. It's more like dipping a chicken into a chicken. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah, oh, that's true. That's or it's true. like dipping a drumstick into chicken salad. Right, right, right. Uh, and then I went across... For, to the Burger King and got a Whopper Jr. with cheese and a bacon double cheeseburger. Wow. And I ate all of it except the Whopper with cheese and a few of the potato wedges. Were you drunk? No. No. See, I would never do that sober. I was having a lay around day. It was Sunday. It was a lazy Sunday. Sure. I got a hankering for donuts in the middle of the afternoon. I went out. I got three donuts. When I went to get the donuts, I spotted the tri Triforce. Right. Of the of these establishments. And then I said at dinner time, I think I'm going to go back. And I went back and did what I had to do. Did you exercise yesterday? Yeah. No. Saturday I did. OK. What Saturday do do? I walked. Run? I walked 12,000 steps on Saturday. OK. And I did upper body stuff. OK. I don't run. I, I walk as much as I can. Right. And I I did. Uh, I did. Uh, you know, I jerked off my dick. Sure. And jizzed some fat out of me. Yeah, that's not necessarily a, an amazing workout. But it's okay. not. I got to get a new doctor, I'll tell you. <laughs> I have to make a phone call. <sighs> it's also can be gluttonous as well with, with jerking off, but I guess that's a different sin probably. I think, uh, yeah, I think gluttony refers mostly to food and drink. Food and drink. What's the last See my disgusting affair you've had with some food? Well, I, you would never know it to look at me, work out. At least six days a week, and that's the truth. I'll wake up and do it in the morning, or I'll do it at night. And it's because my body, be it genetics, whatever else, has just decided it's done processing fat that, and calories. It looks to me all you work out is which ice cream you're going to eat that day. Well, that's hurtful, John. I'm joking. <laughs> um, but I'm just kidding. As with each year, <laughs> with each year, my body gives up a little more to the point where I will work out every day and see no results. I will not eat anything for a week and see no results. And it's infuriating. It sounds like you've got some kind of a reverse cancer. Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> it's not eating away at you. It's like feeding you. So if I'm going to do like a real gluttonous type thing, it's going to be maybe a once a month. And what it would be would be like I would have my standard breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then driving home you have that fourth meal or getting in a lift you get that fourth meal on a night of drinking 
I don't do that shit anymore. I try not to eat past 10 if possible. Uh huh. They say not to eat, you know, four hours before you go to bed. But it becomes more and more of a struggle, and I can't really do it. I used to, at least once a month, get a thing of ice cream and eat it. Eat all of it. Well, now, now I would say this is my night to do Now, this. hold on. A thing is a very broad <laughs> measurement. What, a wheelbarrow what it, of ice cream. A wheelbarrow, yes. No. Yeah. I would get, you know, the, the, the thing. The, the Ben uh, & Jerry's, the pint. No. No? The bigger one. You mean you'd get the gallon of ice cream? Half gallon, right? You'd get the briars like that the rectangular briars, rectangular thing. Eat the whole thing in one night? Now, very often I would not finish it, but that would be a goal, and it was once a month. And I was much skinnier because I would have. I worked with a guy who was like, one day a week you go fucking crazy, and the rest of the week you eat perfectly. Okay, I agree with that. It worked for me for a bit, and then it stopped. Now, if I were to eat that ice cream, I would gain twenty pounds. <laughs> but while I, while I was eating it, I would be, I would gain twenty. What pounds. flavor would you get, by the way? I love a moose track. I love a birthday cake remix kind of situation. What brand of ice cream are you eating? Willy Wonka? <laughs> the no, fuck? The who moose, makes the moose tracks is a readily available flavor, and actually a bunch of companies make a moose tracks. It's the most disgusting name for an ice cream flavor I've ever heard. Well, until I tell you that they're little bits of caramel or peanut butter covered in chocolate, and then they have a fudge ribbon that goes through the ice cream. Yeah, insinuating that it's moose shit that's been dropped on the trail. Oh no, the tracks are like a a, a footprint. I don't. I don't they're buy in the that. shape of a print. What's the fudge swirl? It's just a thick fudge swirl. Um, it's, it's some somewhere in that equation is sh- is a shit representative. I don't think so. What is the tracks? It, like if you follow fu- deer tracks, you're following deer's but feet. But what brand makes this flavor? Every brand at this point because it's become very very popular. Who the fuck makes birthday remix? That you Briars any of them. They all got a birthday cake flavor. Birthday remix. You know there's a whole freezer wall of ice creams. They got They don't just have chocolate and vanilla, Joe. See, I only see what's in the little pints because I'm half civilized. Sure. Oh, and I haven't done this in three years. Fine. But, I mean, it sounds like when you get into those bigger portions, they know the emotions you're dealing with <laughs> and yeah. some different flavors come into play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so now that I do enjoy the occasional marijuana cigarette, I don't have food in the house, and I certainly don't have this kind of food in the house. And if my girlfriend does, I really just kind of have to block it out. You can't do both. Right. You can't have, like, you know, a wall of cookies in your house and smoke pot. I'll tell you what sucked what was last night. The, the part of it that sucked, the gluttonous meal was was tremendous. I enjoyed every bite of it. And you're stone sober doing this. Stone stone sober. And do you feel terrible immediately after or wait till the morning or not at all i didn't have a guilt i just had a i had a bit of a stomach ache because i overate a little bit but you don't like, feel any guilt eating all that no because I, I i ate pretty well all weekend i didn't go crazy like i ate well uh, all week so it was just kind of like eh, whatever sure um it was you know i didn't care but and i knew today i would go back and you know this morning i ate for breakfast i ate Two eggs, sliced tomato, a little bit of two pieces of bacon. Right. For lunch, I ate a chopped salad with no meat in it, like no dressing. Right. You know, like I knew I would, for dinner tonight, I ate quinoa vegetable soup, a couple slices of turkey. I, I don't give okay. a fuck. But anyway, my point is this, is uh, I watched The Revenant. Did you like it? No. Seriously? I love it. Surprisingly, I didn't like it. Uh, it's really it's a strangely divisive movie because I thought it was just a fun action movie like Last of the Mohicans or something. It, I, I, the whole time I was watching it, I was like, this is precious in the woods. You mean too miserable for you? Yeah. It's just somebody at the mercy of their environment and the environment does not let up on them. It's just like your life is going to be shit Almost no never have I, have I felt a movie was too miserable. Maybe that says a little something about the state of mind I live in. Well, I, you know, we watch Precious every Christmas in my family. and <laughs> You get the bucket of chicken. <laughs> she steals that bucket of chicken and runs with it. I remember that part. Yeah. That's the saddest part. The saddest part is when she throws it up. Well, the saddest part is when she gets AIDS at the end on top that of everything. That would be sadder to me, yeah. I but her vomiting up the chicken is pretty rough. Yeah. But the... Uh, but I felt like The Revenant was the same kind of movie where it was like, it was just thing after thing after. It was like, for Christ's sakes. Right. Let you wanted a scene where guy. they all, you know, smoke opium and dance around the campfires. Even the friend, he makes, spoiler alert, if you never saw it, I'm going to ruin something. 
He makes friends with the Indian guy that like helps him right. heal, and then they they hang the Indian guy while he's asleep. You're just like, yeah. for God's sakes, give this guy something. I rolled with him. All he has to look forward to is murdering Thomas Hardy, and then he doesn't even get to murder Thomas Hardy. The Indian guy who yeah, whose that sucked. daughter they take or whatever murders him. I'll agree that that sucked. I was like, why would we watch two and a, two hours, 45 minutes of a revenge epic to not let him get the revenge? He, get, he doesn't get the revenge. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it was a well-done movie. It's like all that, I forget the director's name, but every movie that guy... Too. Every movie that guy does, Birdman, the Red... All of them... 21 Grams, I believe he did. Yep, Babel, which I love. Yeah, they're all movies where I watch them. I say this is a really, really nice piece of art. It's very well done. It's it's enjoyable to an extent, but it's they're just not my kind of movies. I think they're just a little too. They're 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 dark in a. I can't explain it. I'm not against dark movies. It's just there's they're somber, and I think it kind of gets mm-hmm. me down. I hear you. But I embrace it. I saw The Witch on Friday. Haven't seen it yet. Going Wednesday. Wow. Wow. Now, see, Real fucking scary. Real I've talked scary. to other people who were like, eh. They're no idiots. reaction at all. Idiots. All right. Idiots. Only horror movie I've ever been in where up there is a part. Don't don't say anything because I'm seeing it in two days. I'm not ruining anything. There's a scary part Famous that happens about towards the end or three quarters of the way through. There we go. This is the only time I've ever seen a human being do this. It ended. A guy goes... Oh, my God. He yells it out, like, loud in the theater. Okay. There's an audible laugh because it was such a true, like, man being shocked, and he got up and walked out. And I was like, I've never seen somebody walk out, like, in almost disgust. I There was a lot of men screaming when I saw The Conjuring. Sex in the City. No. The Am Conjuring. I? And there was the funniest ever reaction I've ever seen in a movie theater was when I saw Irreversible. What the hell is that? Gaspar No movie, which has, oh, like literally a 15 minute unbroken shot anal rape of Monica Bellucci. Oh, yes, I have seen that movie. That's brutal. And then that fire hydrant beating that's the most yeah. disturbing thing I've ever seen in my yeah. life. And I'm watching this movie, and this old man stands up in the front row. Lord knows why he was there. He was 85 <laughs> years old. And he waggles his finger at the screen from like the third row, and he goes, filth! <laughs> and left like it was the 30s wow and i was like i agree and strong. that was fantastic and i stayed and watched the whole fucking movie strong uh now i also say- when i saw the river wild with meryl streep which is an awesome movie actually never saw it kevin bacon's the villain curtis hansen did it la confidential fame at the end meryl <laughs> spoiler alert movie's tw- 30 years old is reaching for a gun out of her raft and can't quite reach it pretty standard thriller move she can't quite get to it. And this old guy behind me goes, Reach Meryl! <laughs> and I laughed hysterically. It was his genuine reaction to the movie. When I saw Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Loved it. Uh, the part where the ape talks for the first time. Uh, a guy behind me went, What? <laughs> and I was like, I don't understand what you thought. Why are you here right now? <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know this is where it was headed. This was like a nature documentary? Yeah. I was just like, this is a guy that just likes an ape movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, I get it. Uh, I'll say this about The Witch. Again, it's not ruining anything. It's not scary in the way The Conjuring is scary. It's not jumpy scary. It's disturbing. It's bone chilling. It's like shining exorcist scary. All right. I'd love to talk about it next week because I feel like you're going to accidentally ruin it. I'm not going to say anymore. I'm saying it. But I loved days. it. I think it's a masterpiece. Cool 88 minutes. Well, I love that. As you would say. I do love that. Yeah, I know you do. That's why I'm telling you. Um, what did I see at the theater? I saw Kung Fu Panda 3. Why? I love the first two. Oh, all right. Well, that's the best answer for that question, I guess. I, I just think they're funny and they they look beautiful. Nice. It's great animation. You know, and that's, that's how I feel about you. Thanks, John. <laughs> Mixed up for that ice cream comment earlier. Come on, I was joking. Now my, see my gluttony moves are a little different. I would never, ever, get a full meal someplace and then go get a full meal somewhere else. I might eat way too much at one place, or, you know, like, in ordering food. Like here's here's what I can't do. 
if me and Heather, my girlfriend, are going to be like, hey, let's order a lot of food so we have food for the weekend like you might do. That's not going to fly for me. Okay. That, that food's gone that night. Really? That's my issue. I have a problem stopping if there's nothing holding me back. But I work, thankfully, with people with pretty severe body dysmorphia, and they're all pretty <laughs> fit. Not all, but most. And, like, it's the kind of room where if you go get a bag of chips, you feel the eyes on you when you come back to the room. It's not like most writer's rooms. Really? So everybody eats healthy. I eat a salad every day. Every morning I eat a heart-healthy breakfast, like a cereal with some flax seed on it. Okay. I eat a salad for lunch. Sometimes I don't eat dinner or sometimes eat a sensible dinner. So I don't understand my body and I despise my body. Yeah. And I find myself doing things like a a master cleanse once in a while, like complete starvation, um, because I don't know what else to do. But <laughs> we both work in these periods of like extreme gluttony, extreme reining it in, which is very Catholic. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's the pendulum swings yeah. in the Catholic uh, guilt department yeah. but uh it's you know i i don't see my thing is is it's not that i need to eat two full meals right at once right and i don't i didn't finish all of that stuff i i ate three pieces of chicken and a burger and a burger i mean yeah. and and in my defense a double cheeseburger from burger king is not you know it's two little patties and you know whatever yeah. and then and fried chicken pieces the two thighs and a drumstick are not gargantuan right. it's a lot of food but it's not insane uh my point is this i want to know there's more there that's the thing i get out of gluttony yeah i like knowing the safety net is there the night's not over there's food left right the pang isn't over there's booze left sure and if i hurt myself to the point where I go home before that runs out, then great. It was worth the extra cash to know it was there the whole time. Yeah. But if you run out before you're ready to run out, right. that's a sad <laughs> moment. And but I see, don't like that moment. So many people, and I respect them, would be like, like let's say they're they're eating a chicken and rice or whatever. Like I'll do that too. You chicken, broccoli, brown rice, whatever. But you eat the small portion of it and you're like, Man, I'd love to have more food. There are many people who don't. They don't even have that thought. It's but you know they're pussies and I they agree. live in a they live in a weird uh, world of never going over the line and yeah. everything should just be in its everything in its right place. It's that Radiohead song, you know. Everything. Yeah, it's t it's t it's come on. You gotta you gotta. What fun is life if you're not going off the rails a little bit, man? I gotta agree with that. And if you're not hurting anybody, and with this Uber, you're pretty much never hurting anybody. <laughs> you know, like the drinking, I just, I don't get it. I don't get how people would just never drink. And they're like, oh, I, my, my head's so much clearer and this and that. Not really. I've been sober for huge periods of time. You, you don't get that much fucking clear. You're telling yourself things to make your boring ass life seem better. That there's a reason for doing it. Now, if you're blacking out and fucking bums under a bridge... Then, yeah, get your fucking life together. What if you're doing that but not blacking out? Is that bad? You're just stone sober. Well, just you're drunk, but you know what you're doing. <laughs> um, there was a girl, who, well, I won't even say where I lived when this happened, but there was a girl who we all went to a party, and she started talking up to this homeless guy outside, and she went home with him. You've told me this story, and it's real gross. Actually, yep. wait. You haven't she told went me to this. her home, clearly, with him. You haven't told me this story. You've told me you t that's I've never heard that story. I had another friend and we knew a really attractive girl and he told me she got drunk and made out with a homeless guy on the street in front of him. Yeah. And it was like, what? This was they were making out. and We were like, I don't believe what I'm seeing. And then she went home with the guy. Now, was it a good looking homeless man? I mean, yeah, I would say so. But like he, he wasn't like a you could. You, well, I'll tell you this. You could definitely tell he was homeless. Could you smell him? And I, I didn't get that close, and you hate to be, obviously the homeless have been through enough, but it's like there's no chance he smelled great, you know? There's no chance. I wonder if he had a, uh, you know, was he, are we talking like a Mary Poppins homeless kind of guy? An, like, a, a, like a street urchin? Like a sh chimney guy, <laughs> sweeping guy? No, he was pretty like standard issue. I'm just saying he was iron, younger. Like an iron weed. Yeah, exactly. No, he was young. He wasn't like a... You know, he w wasn't like recently homeless. Like a Miley Cyrus homeless guy. No, no, no. I think she has some money, actually. 
No, no, no. But that, remember she brought the homeless guy to the MTV thing? Oh, right, right, right. Like that kind of homeless? Um, He was... No, you could tell he was homeless. Like Newsies. Somewhere in the middle there. I'm telling you he was just a homeless guy. There's like, no... Weren't they homeless in Newsies? Oliver Twist. Like an Oliver Twist Those are street type. urchins in Oliver Twist. Yeah. I portrayed Fagan in Oliver Twist. So, here <laughs> to talk about tangents now. Fourth grade... I am cast as the role of Fagan, the lead role other than Oliver in Oliver Twist. Well, the lead role would be Oliver Twist. The lead role other than Oliver. Is oh, what other said. than. I thought you said the lead role in Oliver Twist. Fagan is the old m- man, the mean man, right? No. Well, f- that's Bill Sykes. Fagan, like, runs the pickpockets. He's, like, their king. Yeah, W.C. Fields played him in the Correct, movie. Yes. I got you. So, uh, if we're talking fourth grade. I walk up. To a sign that's posted outside the drama office. Okay. It says in large letters for all to see, Patrick Walsh is Fagin. F A G I N. <laughs> and I saw it and was like, oh, sweet Lord, no. <laughs> and for a kid who was already not too cool, that did not uh, do me any favors. Hey, but Patrick you, Walsh is Fagin. But you went through with the role. Because you're an artist and you, uh, you're I, committed to your craft. I didn't just go through with it. I really sort of changed the game. You lived it. Yeah. You, you got it. to pick a pocket or two, boys. You got to pick a pocket or two. There have been few musicals slash books slash stories slash movies that I have given less of a rat's ass about than Oliver <laughs> Twist. I have yeah. never understood the, no, there's the no. intrigue. I've never, or the appeal. I don't get it. He's just an orphan, and he wants more food, and there's not much that happens, really. Yeah, there's that part where he wants Is it a more? woman who's beaten by her boyfriend? It's depressing, if, it, if it's anything. And it's kind of like there's that thing they they take from it for the wall. Yeah. Kind right. of. Yeah, exactly. It does. Pink Floyd's the wall. I think they knew what I meant. Well, some might not have. I'm clarifying. Um, now, we're drinking beer as we, we record this. Yeah, I mean, that's what I said to Joe when I came over here. So I went, my girlfriend got me tickets to a music festival this weekend. We popped in, popped out. I had a drink or two each day before we went down to the thing, but didn't go crazy. But I'm just like, I just don't feel like drinking anymore. Then I come over here to do this thing. It's a Monday night. Joe's like, let's have a couple of beers. And I'm like, yep, all right. Then afterwards, it's going to be 8 o'clock. Joe's going to be like, hey, you want to go out? I'm going to go, yep, all right. No, I'm definitely doing that. That's why I texted you before we did this and said, why don't we go have a couple of pops tonight? Yeah. I mean, you are truly uh, my worst influential friend in terms of that stuff. Oh, fuck you. I'm not even saying I don't like it about you. You need a friend like that. Fuck you. I'm telling you, I like it. I'm the fucking... uh, You're the worst of my friends. You You fill the role my buddy Ian used to fill in that... Now he's a married man, but you'll be like, hey, man, we're we're out at the whatever the fuck getting wasted like kind of a lot. And I'll go, OK, and usually I'll come out or was sitting here on a Monday and it's like, hey, let's go get drunk after this. It wouldn't even be on my mind, but you say it. And then I'm like, yes. Then you're like, do you want to go get another round here? Yes. Do you want to go over to this bar and get another yeah. round here? Yes. Here's That's where good. See- you need a friend like that. It makes life fun. Many times it's in my best interest to fucking go home. You know what, you, you friend of mine, you are. Go on. The whiny one. <laughs> the whiny one. Not even whining about it. Get I'm telling you, house. I like this it. Is the thanks I get. Anyone listening to this could tell that I'm telling you I like and now, appreciate. I, this is why I suggested it tonight is because I have off tomorrow right. and I know you're not taping tomorrow. That's correct. So I thought Patty's got a short day. I have off. It's a beautiful, crisp, sweet, sweet, sweet smelling night here in Los Angeles. It is. It's crisp. Uh, Maddie McCarthy, our dear friend, yeah, uh, texted me. Goes, are you doing anything tonight? I'm at the Virgil. Love it for hot tub. That means Curdy Braunholer's over there. Yeah, I said, Patty, go get a couple pops after the fucking podcast tonight. Let's go have some right. fun. And I'm telling myself now that I'll have a couple beers, have a good time, and head home. But a lot of times these nights devolve into me getting home at two o'clock, reeking a booze. Hey, you that's know that's fine. I'm a facilitator. That's right. You're a facilitator. I make things happen. Now, when I have hated it in the past is when you'll be like, let's also add in this 2.35 a.m. trip to Del Taco. And then the next morning, I'm like, (laughs) fuck you, Joe. 
Look, man, you're your feeling own like a, a burrito lounging around my midsection. You're your own person. I don't twist your arm. I don't pressure Let's you. Let's go to the videotape. <laughs> you ha- especially when you're heavily drunk, will scream in my face. I don't do that Come anymore. Come on, you fucking pussy. <laughs> have another dr- have a shot. Have a burrito. I don't do that anymore, though, because you told me that it upset you, so I stopped doing it. You do it. Le- you're the de- you're the devil on the shoulder. But I don't do that they anymore. You need a devil on the shoulder. We were out last weekend for our buddy Vince's bachelor party. Not once did I Perfect force night. you to do a shot. I didn't yell pussy at you one time. No, that's true. And actually, the shot you bought me, I pawned off on our friend Brett. And then there you go. Yeah. There, I, I really... I said Brett. I meant Brent. Sorry, I really Brent. try to stay cognizant of when my friends tell me, which you have... That you don't like something. And you told me before, I don't like when you yell in my face, <laughs> you Which fucking pussy, do perhaps, the shot with me. Perhaps didn't need to be told to most, but yeah. Yeah. I, I It you worked know. out better. And that night, by the way, I had a Red Bull prior, which I never do. I drank at such a perfectly even keel with everybody from 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. I woke up with not a trace of a hangover. I felt amazing the entire night. It was a beautiful evening. I drank with an even keel. That was quite heavy. Yeah, till two a.m. from four thirty. Did not have a Red Bull beforehand, <laughs> yeah. and was immensely hungover the next day. Probably because I started eating weed gummy fish around one thirty, as if they were actual food. I yeah. just started eating. Them. Oh wow! And I was like, "Come on, who wants one?" And I was giving them to people, and like, I See, ate. See, Joe. Like, now you won't even remember this. When we were walking to the last bar, which was as it always is, the goddamn drawing room. Yeah, if you're from L.A., drawing One of my least sunset. favorite bars on earth. It is a real hardcore bar, man. <laughs> we're walking over there, and you were talking to me and Vince. You were in great spirits. You were feeling great. Oh, I wasn't walking with you, if you don't remember. Then this was the walk to the other bar. Okay. So you were like, hey, who wants a, you know, a gummy fish? Or whatever? And I go, Joe, I got to tell you. I go, I know that sounds like a great idea. It's 1 a.m. That's not a great idea. You don't want to do that right now. And like this, here's a couple real drunk guys telling you it's not a good idea right now. Right. We're all real drunk. You don't know where that's going to take you. That's a beginning of the night thing. Or a no drinking night oh, kind of thing. it took me, baby. And you were like, ah, I guess you're right. And I'm like, Joe? And you're like, yeah. I go, come on, man. You don't want to eat that stuff. And you're like, all right, I'm putting it back in my pocket. And after that, you must have started eating them like crazy. When I got to the drawing room. And you just listened. When I got to the drawing room. Oh, yeah. You were staring vacantly Because the space. second to last bar, I decided to hang back at for a while just by myself yeah no, i remember that too. uh and i said i'll just meet you guys and then i walked to the drawing room alone met you guys there and then started eating the gummies yeah and giving them to whoever would take them right and i was not in good shape the next day yeah at the end of the night when i left you i said goodbye to your face three or four times and i knew i was not getting uh <laughs> any sort of register from you <laughs> mentally or verbally <laughs> i was like well all right yeah, I was in. I was in rough. Sh- it was a bachelor party. What are you gonna do? I tried to really. St- is it stave off or scave off? Stave. Stave off the guilt the next day. Because I said, you know, because I felt real guilty. I felt terrible the next day. Right. And I was like, you know what? It was a bachelor party. You go crazy. We went yeah. crazy. So here's now my like, question. Go ahead. Why don't? Why aren't we doing that? One, two times a month. <laughs> why are we not having these like monster four p.m. to two a.m. hangs? We honestly, we completely should because we're all a couple years max away from just never doing that again. I mean, our bodies won't be able to take it. A and B will be married and kids and et cetera. Aside from our friend getting married. Yeah. There was nothing about that day that made it more unique than we could have made it any other Saturday. No, definitely not. We could do that every Saturday. I think to- all told on the night and I'm buying drinks for Vince. I'm buying drinks. I'm having a good time. Jukebox here. I probably spent eighty bucks. Well, well, or a hundred bucks. You I know. spent about five hundred. Well, you were perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't go back for the old lap dance. I uh, looked in my I looked at my account the next day. And yeah. it was just there were like three debits for like two hundred dollars. Sure. at different places. I was like, my God, and I had a hundred dollars in my pocket when I got there. Yeah. What the fuck would I spend all my money on? See, you were probably were you doing the gummies pre strip club? Because that's a way to lose all your money. Uh I don't 
remember. Well, now that the cat's out of the bag, I wasn't know. I didn't know if we were allowed to say that we went to a strip club. Or oh, not. I can totally say I went to a strip club, and I can also say honestly on the air that I did not get a lap dance, which I'm and neither did Vince. Sort of proud of, and neither did Vince, who, no. who's the guy that would, you know, potentially get in any shit. Like we were yeah, just yeah, literally yeah. in a strip club for the for the. Uh, symbolism or whatever you want to call right. it of being in a strip club for a bachelor party. However, I did also we were in a we were in a bikini bar where there is yeah, no nudity. Bar. Even I did get lap dances. Uh, I got about ten <laughs> in a row, uh, which that's what I was doing when you guys were leaving. And I said, just go on without me, like like yeah, like we bad. were in Vietnam and I wasn't going to make it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I remember going. The brownout occurred. I texted you the next day. Things started to go dim during the lap dances. Always bad. And because uh, then you don't even remember something you've spent all this money. I for. remember walking to the cash machine, getting out two hundred dollars, giving it right to her. Yeah. And then and then walking to the drawing room with with a skip in my step that I can't <laughs> even explain. Yeah, see, I mean, what you touched on, and I guess it well, it's definitely a Catholic thing as well. But like, I think most people they get drunk, they wake up with a hangover, they're like, oh, my head hurts. I know for me, I don't want to speak for you as well. I wake up with "ow, oh, my head hurts" and tremendous guilt, and overwhelming shame. And most people don't have that. Joe's just walked away as I turned to him to chime in on my point. But it is the truth. I, you know, my father told me from when I was five years old, "Don't ever have a drink," because he was an alcoholic. So he had his fun till he was forty years old. Then he was like, "You can never have fun." So instead of just waking up hungover, I wake up with this guilt and shame. It's gotten better as time goes by. And a big part of it is just like I work really hard. I've done well for myself. If I want to go out on a Friday night and drink or smoke a joint or whatever, who am I hurting? The answer is no one. The answer is absolutely no one. Maybe I'm hurting myself a bit. But within, you know, Reason. knock on wood, within three years' time, I'm probably going to be married with a little one bouncing on my knee. Patty, I got to tell you. I'm not going to be able to do this. Why would I not do it now? Most don't people don't anywhere. get these opportunities. They get married at 21 and they resent that they never had any fun. I'm having fun. I don't think you're anywhere near an alcoholic. And proof of that is is the way you whine like a little fucking baby <laughs> whenever I ask you to do a shot with me. Yeah, I won't do shots. I mean, it's not really. I know for, I, believe me, I know I'm not an alcoholic. I can go months at a time without a drink and not think twice. It really wouldn't bug me. But the power of suggestion is key. I don't have that thing where my hand's trembling and I'm eyeing a bottle of whiskey across the room. If I'm home alone, I'm never going to have a drink. But when somebody's like, hey, do you want to have a drink? That becomes three. When they say, hey, do you want to go to this next place and have three more? I go, sure. I'm bad at saying no. Uh, my friend Jake Johansson, very funny comedian. I remember we talked about this at length recently. Mm -hmm. And we were breaking down the like, you know, the science of drinks. Mm -hmm. Which one went where does it turn? And he was like, if you could somehow master walking away after that third drink, it would be a perfect night. But the problem is, is that third drink is when you're like, well, why not? Here we are. And yeah, that's that's when sure. you keep going. And here's my although I can't hardly say it's an issue, but I really think Do you hear this upstairs, by the way. It's a relentless, like a rolling of... I mean, it's just, it's just, I, I'm not, I, I think it's the dog, but my neighbors, I believe, are playing bocce ball or something up there. I don't know what the Might hell be a, is... There's a shuffleboard, perhaps? Happening up there. It literally sounds like a, a human being version of foosball is happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all right, sorry. No, it's fine. I, um, you were saying... One more. Three. The three, three is perfect. If you could ever yes. walk away from after that third drink, you'd be in. Right. Which is why I like wine, because a bottle of wine is roughly four glasses. Yeah. They're four n decent sized glasses, but it's not crazy. And th that fourth glass, you you're that to me when I drink wine, that fourth glass is when you start going, I don't think I want any more of this. Like exactly. I'm getting tired of this flavor. It's a lot of sugar. Whatever. You I've, have never a bottle, opened, I've never opened a second bottle of wine. No. You have a bottle of wine. Just take, me by myself. Take a couple rips off your bowl, some some sure. mellow weed. Sure. I did that Friday night. I drank a bottle of white wine. Uh, I, I smoked <laughs> weed by myself. Uh huh. And I listened to these Zappa albums I bought at Amoeba that day that were like triple albums. Now, the last time we did this podcast, you were saying, I just had a bottle of wine, smoked some weed, 
listened to Megadeth and played video games. This yes. is becoming a bit of a pattern. But it was why the second it? time I've done it, and I got to tell you, and I've always been, you know, I'm on a writing gig right now, so it's like yeah. when I have to work like during the days and stuff. I'm real big on like we got to tear this town down Friday yeah. and Saturday night because I got to work all day. It. But I got to tell you this. It was the first time and I can't remember how long where I knew I had to work on Monday and I sat home on a Friday alone and didn't care. Yeah. I had a really, really nice time. I was smiling. I was enjoying the music. Yeah. I had Khan, the dog with me. We're, we're, we had a great time. It can be great, and it gets you out of your head, and I've had friends say, because, you know, especially the writer's mind, I have an OCD mind. Not OCD in terms of light switches, but in terms of human interaction. What did I say? What did I do? Did I bother this person? Did I, you know, on and on and on. To shut that off, which is where weed came into the picture and alcohol to some degree, it changed my life. And my friends who are sober, I'll say, well, how do you shut off your brain when it's going crazy? They're either on antidepressants, which I won't do, not that I'm judging it at all, but they also will say, well, I do meditation. Now, folks, that just ain't going to cut it for me. I'm sorry. I've attempted it. <laughs> you said that so much like Dennis Miller. It was crazy. Folks. <laughs> now, folks, that's just not going to fucking cut it, okay? That's not going to cut it. You want to Dalai Lama your way into a fucking Riesling, babe? How about you Suddenly go? You're George W. Bush on the uh, the the ship of the Titanic, and you're saying I won. How about you contemplate the meaning of getting me a beer? Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to have a good time. I'm sitting here with the Dolly fucking llama, babe. It's one of my favorite bad impressions to do. I'm not a fan of Dennis Miller. Huge fan. Not a fan of his politics. Don't agree with his politics, but huge fan of his comedy. All right. I think he's fucking hilarious. I think he's so funny. Never dug him. Great, great. Den Let me tell you. We're going to digress. Let me just digress on this. Let me tell All you right. a couple of great Dennis Miller jokes. Oh, oh, God. Hey, those customers at Walmart aren't getting any slimmer, are they? Pretty sure anything under 300 pounds doesn't even trip the automatic door anymore. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. That's, that's a great joke. That's funny. <laughs> uh, now, do you do meditation? You do some. I used You've to. Tried I don't it. do it anymore. I don't like it. I haven't, to be honest, I have not given it a serious try. But when I sit down, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I know a big part of it is overcoming that. But to me, it's just like, all right. Like, I get that it might benefit me to sit quietly. But you know what I do? Not proud of it. I take a bath. That's my meditation. That's I funny. put on music. I sit in the bathtub for an hour. I feel great. It helps me sleep. Helps me calm down. I guess in a way that is meditation. But in, in terms of... Sitting in a room, repeating a word to myself, that's that's not going to work for me. I was, uh, you know, I started painting in place of meditation. Yeah, and I And it, it brought me the same enjoyment. I'm not really that good at it, but I enjoyed doing it. I'm sure you know. Fine. Well, the reason I did that was because my mom's therapist told her about these things called adult coloring books where they're like, can I tell you a bit? Sorry, quick interruption. The show I write for, we do a, usually the cold open is, Cat Dennings chewing out a customer for being a lose. Like somebody had a, one of those, uh, you know, the dogs where they're, you're allowed to bring the dog in because they're your companion or whatever. Serviced animal. Yeah. It's yeah. just we take something in the news and she chews the person out for it at being stupid. You know, it's usually how the show begins. So I wrote one today. They sent me off because we're running a little behind on scripts to write the cold open. And it was her chewing out a guy for doing adult coloring books. That's crazy that's that you great. say that because well, I researched them and everything. That's very funny. Um, yeah, what my mom, you know, my mom's therapist turned her on to it, and she was, uh, you know, if you don't know what they are, I know it sounds kind of silly, but. I, I, I researched, and as I was writing dialogue making fun of it, I was like, I would do this and probably love it. Well, it's, they're, they're coloring books, but they're for adults, so they're very intricate designs, and yeah. they take a lot of concentration because you have to color in a lot of small shapes. Right. Um it's like st it's like it's like the most intricate stained glass design, you right. know. Why well, doodle all day? It's the same shit. Right. So I thought I don't really have any desire to fill f complete a coloring book, but I like paintings. I have some paintings in my house. I yeah. thought, well, I bet you if you just paint, it's the same thing. And painting's great, man. You put on, I'll put on like, you know, like John Carpenter's Lost Themes or right, right. or Beck Morning Phase, like something very cinematic, right. 
and just paint and it's great and I'm, i haven't been doing I it since it. i moved into this apartment yeah I downsize to save space and i don't it's too fucking i have nowhere to put the easel anymore right so I'm, I'm actually looking at a desktop easel online right now so i can start doing it again it's I hard though it. because then you got to put the goddamn canvases right and it's i like personally would so much paint. rather be creative and i i completely completely get and it would never make fun of meditation for somebody and working for somebody but for me i would so much rather be creating and that's so much more beneficial to me even if it's something nobody will ever see putting your mind to work in that capacity as opposed to just sitting in a room for an hour i just i would be so anxious about wasting that time that i would never be able to relax i just uh, you know they say especially with tcm that there's no Transcendental meditation. Yeah, that there's no wrong way to do it. Right. And I, you know. There's my, also, my buddy they sh- also say that there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. <laughs> and that I agree with. <laughs> my buddy Sean O'Connor, who's a very funny comic and yeah, a writer. Yeah, no, I love him. He, uh, we talked about it and I said, I can't do it. And he goes, neither can I. I don't like it. And I go, and I said, I go, they, they say there's no wrong way to do it. I know for a fact I'm doing it wrong. If I sit for 20 minutes and all I think about is sex, I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. That's not what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be transcending. And he was like, he's like, no, I agree. He's like, I can't. My mind can't stay still. I'm distracted. I think a truly funny, creative person is always going to have a real struggle with that or else you're not really, I don't know. I don't want to take my edge off. That's where my comedy lies, you know? I don't mind taking my edge off, but I'm telling you, I'm on meds. Sure. I'm on Prozac. Right. I'm on a I'm on a hot forty milligrams a day. Right. Not that much. But enough. Yeah. And it I don't feel numb. Right. I just feel even. Mm-hmm. I just feel even. Trust me. I still have plenty of bouts of unjustified anger and sure. yelling in traffic and sure. worrying about things like like a Woody Allen character would or something. You know what I mean? Right. Like I, I am not I'm not a stale brain at this point, yeah, but yeah. I'm a manageable person at this. Point. Right. And I didn't used to be. I used to get consumed and yeah. and just something stupid like hearing I didn't get some job I wanted. It was like days of just fuck this and this fucking world sucks and everybody's out to get me. It's crazy. Right. It's like that's not tr- none of that's true. You learn when you are around people like that. That's the biggest help for me is when you're around somebody who's like, man, fuck it. There's always a, a writer in every writer's room or somebody who's like, fuck that. Fuck everything, man. This business is so fuck it. And when you're around that, you immediately learn, OK, I don't ever want to be this person because it can be unbearable to be around. It's like is it everyone's struggling. So you talking about how shitty life is is not helping anyone out. We're all having issues. We all just don't feel the need to talk about it day in and day. My, my problem was I'd say I never want to be that guy, but then I would still sort of – I mean, I'm never right. – I don't think I've ever been that guy, but I would act more like that guy than I ever wanted to or, or was ever okay with. Sure. And which brings us full circle, You your frustrations with the world, with yourself, your shortcomings, whatever, right. you then turn to indulge in something. And yeah, for absolutely. me and for you, it sounds like it was food and drink a lot of the time. I am a huge stress eater, and when I, when I first came out to Los Angeles, I had a writing partner, and it was like, we knew that we had one week off of work to come out here to LA and basically get an agent and a job and everything else, and I was so terrified, and there was this place, there still is this place called Diddy Reese in Westwood, California, and it was two of the best cookies you've ever eaten, and between the cookies was ice cream, delicious ice cream. And each sandwich was $1. Oh, wow. So And it was on the UCLA campus over in Westwood. Okay. So we had heard it was good, and we go in there and stop. And as I am talking, like, because we met up with all these agents, and I was like, I hate these people, and is this what people in LA are going to be like? And all these agents are douchebags, and I hate it out here. We're not going to get a job, and I hate these right. fucking assholes. And at this time, I didn't smoke weed. You know, like, I had no- nothing to balance myself. Sure. And while talking, I was almost like, like Bugs Bunny pushing a carrot <laughs> into his mouth. I was just jamming this Diddy Reese sandwich one after another into my mouth, standing over a trash can on the side of the road, pounding these Diddy Reese sandwiches until I went, whoa. And normally, if that sort of thing happens, it would be alone <laughs> at home on like a late Saturday night, and I would be like, oh, my God, I'm so ashamed. 
but this was like someone else saw it. He took it to the streets. I was like, Jesus Christ, I got to get myself under control. Big stress eater. It's a uh, it's a problem of mine. But the key is, and it always has been, keep the food out of your house for me. But now I live with somebody, and it's much harder to do. I'm not a stress eater. I'm a depression eater. I was a depression eater. Okay. So when I was stressed, I don't want to eat, usually. See, when I'm stressed, I don't want to eat because I'm too nervous. Mm -hmm. And I'm convinced that I'm going to die or the world's going to collapse around me. So I'm like, who can think about food? It's like it's like a death row last meal at that point to me. I'm like, I'm going to die. This is what I can't think about eating right now. But depression is when I'm like, fuck everything. And yeah, I'm going to go get a fucking pizza sure with everything on it i'm just gonna lay here and watch my dvds right. and play video you know that's that's how i get that sort of shit like it it's a rare occasion nowadays but if i really want to just eat something i'll get like a limited amount of thai food where like i know I, if i eat all this i'll be okay i would never ever order a large pizza because i would shit can that thing sure i can't do that i can't have that much lying around I it's a problem to- but everybody has their problems I used to do my depression meal used to be the KFC legs and thighs bucket, Ugh. which I believe was I wouldn't eat it all in one sitting, but yeah. I believe it was. I, th- I think it was 20 pieces or f- like 15 pieces. It was a lot of chicken. Uh-huh. And it would come with that four biscuits and two large sides. Okay. And I would. I would when I was really depressed. I remember I was living in a studio apartment in Gramercy. The, my, one of my CDs, the closing bit is the story of doing this. Yeah. I'm not going to do the bit right now, but but I when I lived in Gramercy, I lived in this really shitty slumlord studio apartment. It was horrible. It was gross, and it was cold in New York. And I was just, I just didn't have anything going on, and it was a real dark time. But I remember I would frequently. And by frequently, I mean probably once a week, once every two weeks, go to KFC, which was walkable from my apartment. Uh huh. This tells you something. I felt lucky that I lived near a good <laughs> KFC when I moved uh-huh. in. That was like a perk. Right. And I'd get the family picnic meal by myself. And every time, without question, the guy would kind of look like, mm-hmm. you don't seem to have a family. Right. You don't uh, seem to be going on a picnic for that. Yeah, matter. exactly. It's 20 degrees outside. You're alone. <laughs> uh-huh. I don't see a wedding ring. Yeah. It seems that you've been crying. Right. Uh, no, and I would take it home, and I would just, for like three consecutive meals. Flex of jizz on your sweatpants, probably. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Three consecutive meals, I would just eat it, and like I would eat it while watching, you know, that was when Netflix and Apple TV was still like sort of a new thing in my life. Right. And uh, I'd I'd put on Netflix stuff, and I'd eat and pass out on my love seat. I didn't even have a couch because the the studio was too small. Pass out on my love seat, wake up, watch a little more, eat again, pass out. Yeah. It was really some (laughs) real General Kurtz level, like, fucking (laughs) Yeah, I mean, if you're mixing sleeping and eating is definitely not good. Oh, I went through a period like that. Because your body is not burning a thing. No, I had many phases like that in New York where I would literally, where I would get so depressed because it was such a hard city to live in. Right. And it was, you know, this this line of work is always a hustle and to an extent a struggle. Yeah. But it's it's gotten easier over the years and I've gotten to do better things and I've gotten to make more money and things get a little more comfortable right but in new york we're definitely so far at least the hardest times i've ever had so i had stretches where i literally would just be sleeping to get to the next meal right because i just was so fucking depressed it was it was horrible i didn't do anything like you know not the whole time but a lot of the time right um anyway well let's (laughs) you get you get hangovers yeah every time you drink no 50 percent Nah, 30. Like if you wake up and you're naughty, you're like, oh, thank God. Nah, I get them about 30. Like, yeah, 30% of the time I'll go a little too hard and won't drink enough water or something. Right. And I'll wake up with a headache. I, I think, That's the only kind of hangover I ever get is the headache. I, it's never like, oh, I'm going to throw up. No, it's never neither. anything like me that. Neither. I just, It's just I have a headache. I think cause I started drinking when I was 23, which is a good five, six, seven years later than most. And I started smoking pot occasionally you know, five years ago, I don't ever get it. I'd have to be like going off the charts. And even then I drink a ton of water before I go to bed. So that's where you get into kind of a problem area because aside from the guilt, 
if you wake up and you're not hungover after drinking heavily, you're kind of like, why wouldn't I just drink heavily all the time? There's, yeah. there's a caloric issue to drinking, of course. And there's, you know, you don't want to be the asshole who's drunk all the time. But there's a part of me sometimes that's like, if I could just do this and not get hung over, which is the reason most people stop. There's a reason Roger Ebert stopped being an alcoholic was he couldn't handle the hangovers and do his job. But apparently he was one of the, you know, I watched the documentary about him, which was great. And he was just like, the hangovers eventually stopped it. It was too much. I don't have those. Yeah. And it's not one of those things where I'm like just always drunk, so I'm never hung over or something. Sure. I could skip a month, come back in, not get hung over. Well, yeah. When I was your age... What are you, 35? Yeah. Yeah, when I was, I'm 38 now. I've been in New York or L.A. since I was 35 and a half or something. Right around your age, three years leading up to that, it was like 32 to 35, I had mastered. I mean, I was drinking pretty heavily in New York. It was yeah. four or five nights a week. We Because I I, at that point in time, I never had a writing job. Right. It was just doing stand up. Yeah. So there was never a reason to not go out. Yeah. I've All done the drinks- stand up. I think the big thing keeping me from fully embracing that world because I I love it and I think I would have done well. I do well when I do it now. But that life is just too much darkness for me with my already built in darkness. Well, you can't for me to be drinking every night. I couldn't do it. You can't. I'm glad that that's not the case anymore. Now that yeah. I live out here, it's a very different world. But right. at that time, I was also depressed, as I said. But at that time, that stretch was like all the drinks were free. Yeah. The club hooked you up. I always made friends, good friends with the bartenders. Not out of any interest in getting free drinks. I just made friendly with bartenders. So I had, I got free drinks. And then I also had bars where I would get a buyback every three rounds or whatever. Sure. So like Buybacks don't happen in LA, to my knowledge. No. So, I mean, it was just chaos it was chaos and then yeah. i hung out all, some of my friends were were industry people mm-hmm. so then they they'd fucking comp tabs because right. they were like it's a write-off this is work yeah. and it was and we would just it was just night after night of getting shit faced and i just hit a point i remember calling my friend scott and being like i don't know what i've done but i don't get hung over at all and i'm really going after it and yeah. he was like that's a fucking miracle. Why are you questioning it? Don't like, don't look the gift horse in the mouth. And I was yeah. like, I won't. And I'm glad that a that frequency changed because I became happier and healthier. But also b that there is the occasional hangover to remind me, like you're not. Uh, yeah, that's why it's there to put you in line. In closing, Pat, let's yeah. wrap this up. One gluttony meal right now. What would you do? I feel like we've talked about this on the show before. You know what I've been thinking about constantly that I would really love is like an entire box of what I used to get. My mom would let me every year for my birthday, pick my birthday meal and I got Velveeta shells and cheese. All right. Which looking back shows you my family might've been struggling a little bit. (laughs) That was the most extravagant meal we could think of. (laughs) Okay. But I would eat like right now I would go crazy on some Velveeta shells and cheese. If they still make it, I don't know. Hey man, I'm right with you. My gluttony meal or take a taco kit. Oh, yeah, we used to get those a lot. Or the old El Paso taco kit. So we're both kind of going back to a childhood place. I still, once a month, I'll do a taco night by myself. It's exciting. I love getting all the shit and having those tacos. It's great. What I'm really happy about is my answer always would have used to been like a Ralph's or a grocery store sheet cake. And now when I think about about eating one slice of it, it makes me sick to my stomach. Because we're getting older and more mature. You've mentioned the sheet cake fantasy before. <laughs> it uh, is a fan, like plunging my dick into a sheet cake. Can you oh imagine boy. how good that would feel? It's uh, and then eating it, <laughs> folks. You've been listening to "We'll See You in Hell." As you can see, the title still is appropriate. <laughs> uh, this is a presentation of the Fangoria Podcast Network, produced by Thomas DeFeo, executive produced by Ken Hanley of Fangoria Entertainment. For press opportunities, advertising inquiries, and information about We'll See You in Hell, contact Ken at Fangoria.com. Let us know what you think of the new format. We hope you like it. We want to try this out for a little while, but we're our ears are open. Uh, and if you're uh, in the southeast, uh, let's see, March, I'm coming through Min- uh, Minneapolis. I'm coming through Wilmington, North Carolina. I'm coming through New Orleans. I'm coming through... Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Uh, I'm coming through Greenville, South Carolina, and possibly Atlanta. 
So uh, anyway, if you're around, keep your eye out for the Twitter posts. The dates are coming soon. Joe DeRosa Comedy on Twitter. Also, if you're at the triangle of KFC, Burger King, and McDonald's, you might see Joe there as well. Right. Uh, I am at the Patrick Walsh Twitter, Vine, Instagram. Don't really got nothing coming up. Uh, I'm just happy to be alive, frankly. Let us know what you think of the new format. Uh, we'll talk to you soon, folks. Thanks. I have one more plug. Yeah. Sorry, one more plug. So I've been recording music since before I did comedy, and now and then I did comedy, and I stopped putting out my music. But I started putting out music. I've been writing and recording again. It's under uh, the band name is Demon Riot. It's on uh, Bandcamp. It's up there for free, two EPs for free. The full album's coming soon. Love to know what you think about that as well. All right, folks. Bye.